which led the military to intervene should be avoided. Uh, it was also said most people are not radicalized. Most people try to resist uh, radicalization and they want to live uh, and be uh, useful citizens. There is a strong resilience among, among communities and we need, to, we need to be much better in dealing with underlying causes. And, and the problem between modernity and, 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 and the transition to state institutions, how do we, uh, how do we make sure democracy, democracy works in, in, in these countries? And then uh, the question was asked, can we have African solutions for African problems? when we need resources, autonomy, and cannot trust international uh, solidarity. Examples were, were said in other places like Ukraine, how the intervention was. Uh, Ukraine is a good example. The closest and uh, partner of African Union, as mentioned, couple of times is the European Union. African, Africa's largest mission in uh, peacekeeping mission is in Somalia since 2007 and European Union is the main funder. It is spent uh, since 2007 up to now less than three billion. And that is, uh, I think Ambassador Shergi and others know, it has been very difficult for the EU. Very difficult. Yet, uh, Ukraine war is February last year up to now. I think combined the humanitarian and military support is over 100 billion. So we need to have our own solidarity. And, and, and also we need to educate the external actors so that they understand our local uh, context. That's only when we can have genuine partnership. Because if they don't understand and we don't explain then they do their own things. Their budgets are approved on a yearly basis. So, uh, also was mentioned the use of force. We should be careful on, on, on the use of force because it's very easy to cross the line. Political solutions are not always easy. It needs constant uh, engagement. Solution is, is not either governance, use of uh, force or leadership, but combination of all this. International support is crucial one, but as we said, we need to know what we want from the internationals. And, and then the third uh, panel, building strong institutions and the rule of law, of course, uh, you all know accountability, stability, political and socio-economic, uh, the nexus between governance and peace and, 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 and sustainable development. Uh, it was also mentioned that countries that are having challenges are repeat offenders meaning the, the coup has been uh, persistent. So it's definitely not about uh, one specific entity. The most important factor in building institutions is investing the state capacity and, and, and making it priority. 
judiciary also was mentioned, and civil society. So to have strong uh, institutions, we need transformational leadership versus transactional uh, leadership. We need to empower our, our main client, which is the citizen, but also those who we entrust to authority. Uh, the state has to be inclusive, participatory, and representative, and youth and women and, uh, was mentioned. Especially, uh, roles should be given women, young people, and private sector. Democracy will not solve all problems, but we need to respect the institutions and they have to be anchored at certain principles and standards. All these solutions and require time. And uh, it was said the international community is in hurry. They want the transition to happen quickly. National government, public opinion, also the citizens are in hurry also. So we may need to manage time. Again, uh, fundamentals were, were discussed. You know all these fundamentals, the rule of law, uh, separation of powers, uh, respect to uh, the human rights and promotion, uh, being inclusive at the national and local uh, level. And then it said uh, democracy is work in progress. It's not perfect, it's, it takes time. So, uh, panel, next panel was panel four, international and sub-regional organizations and what role they should play in supporting political transitions. We need to dialogue and give everyone the room to participate. The role of the international community and organizations is, is to accompany the transition and enrich the dialogue. Multilateralism has a key role in facilitating peace and security. Regional integration and cooperation are essential to strengthening solidarity between our countries, but many countries, again today, are killing our solidarity. We need to transform our organizations to promote solidarity, make it inclusive of the youth, and meet the aspiration of our population. Uh, also, the, the weaknesses of UN Security Council was mentioned. It is incapable of solving a global problem. They are not able to drive consensus, especially on peace and security issues. So we are in a global crisis. Africa should forge at this stage because when the world is focusing in other areas, then we have opportunity to actually do our own things and focus uh, and even contribute. Regional organizations, our capacity to respond is limited. We tend to apply the same remedy, remedy to all issues. Uh, the need to be more creative was mentioned. We need to have, uh, we need to acknowledge that Mali, Niger, and Burkina are facing very difficult uh, situation. African Union and ECOWAS are said to be not responding in a, in a, in a way that is helpful. 
Fear cannot be a policy. We have to be pragma pragmatic. Sanctions are punishing entire populations. Organizations are in instrumentalized. We need a new approach to solidarity. Uh, also, it was mentioned non-Africans move more freely in Africa than Africans. Uh, I think here, uh, especially the countries in, in ECOWAS, uh, West Africa, I think they have free movement of, of people and goods and, and, and services, uh, notwithstanding the, the current uh, issues with the, those countries mentioned. But they are much better compared to where I come from, uh, especially in the Horn. Uh, so we need to have local uh, solutions and this comes with challenges, challenges we mentioned in other panels at the international, local, and, and, and national level. Coup, coup d'etats, I think coup countries cannot be said, uh, maybe coup, coup uh, governments. Uh, are not only repeat vendors, but even the democracy that was there was weak before uh, the coup happened. So transitional uh, governments need to be effective. AU, African Union uh, needs to play a role in, in, in helping capacitate in this stage to, to move from this uh, transition. Uh, Togo was asked also to facilitate transitional agreements should facilitate transition and democracy. Uh, again, uh, AU Rex all were said to even lack the capacity to address these issues. So we have to build what we have and uh, emphasis again women, young people, uh, devolved was uh, discussed also the culture for to be a basis and learning and again alliances were, were mentioned, uh, Sahel countries because they have common problem uh, the need to have more global response to terrorism, and then partnerships should be win-win. And the finally, the, the final panel of, of African solutions, mobilizing continental innovation and agility. Peace is not absence of, power, of war. Think of Africa's future in 2046. What would Africa look like? Uh, even the metaphor of the, of the Lomi was uh, mentioned where you have a big tree with deep roots. Uh, the, it was said even African uh, countries would agree, agree on everything is a myth, as a myth. We have to accept our diversity, but it doesn't mean uh, we, we cannot agree on the, on the main principles. It's already in, in instituted. African people are desperately in need of pro prosperity. And uh, freedom in the economy is best achieved through democratic norms and through stability. There is no shortcut to modern prosperity. The idea of, uh, was mentioned that African solutions are unique, is, is uncomfortable. Uh, the idea that we must brand or tag uh, things as African in order to accept them need to be revisited. 
we need to avoid ethnic epistemology. Uh, also, again, uh, it comes back to to the same issues, uh, especially the the cross-cutting issues on 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 the values and the principles uh, continue to be same uh, in, in, in terms of uh, rule of law. Uh, democratic governance, authority, having effective state institution, having uh, protection of human rights, serving the citizens, uh, making sure that the state is not uh, is responsive, that we don't have uh, transactional leaders who, uh, who are there only to pocket uh, their resources, uh, building networks, um, then someone said, think about resilience. Uh, so I, I try to understand the resilience because there is this, uh, this Lebanese American who writes about something called anti-fragile. Uh, it's beyond resilience. We have been resilient. Africa has been resilient for a long time. And, and I think corruption has become resilient. So we, we need to address these issues. Uh, the youth in, in today's world, Africa is a youthful uh, continent and it should be seen as different. And then They are not threats, so youth are not a problem. Uh, violence of exclusion. Young people are not included in the key policies. Uh, think of justice as prevention, not retrospectively as uh, accountability. The need to have uh, social justice. Again, uh, justice, judiciary, independence, the separa separation of powers have been also mentioned. And we need to mobilize, uh, mobilize the resources we have uh, in terms of uh, innovation and technology. Uh, we cannot develop without coherence, coherent macroeconomic and market uh, system. Political systems are weak because the elite do not dis distribute uh, wealth sufficiently. Now, uh, again, same issues uh, are cross-cutting in terms of education and, and jobs, creating, uh, removing the obstacles, using technology uh, to accelerate development. Uh, now, finally, uh, I think someone said uh, there has to be early warning. Then Ambassador Shergi responded saying, you know, uh, yes, early warning, but we need also early action. We need to be able to anticipate. And my teacher used to say, you know, there is a difference between teaching and learning. Teaching is uh, you go to school, and I'm not a teacher, so if I make a mistake, so you are uh, excused. Already the teacher expects prescribed answers. He, he wants you to, he gives you a problem, and he wants you to answer those specific uh, answers he expects. If you don't answer, then uh, you make mistakes. But learning is different. Learning is anticipating and having the creativity, ingenuity, innovating. So in our cases, we are not here to, to be taught. 
And you cannot definitely teach, teach uh, leaders who are power and in power, whether they are military or, or civilian. So we need to learn with them in order to anticipate and find solutions that are innovative and, and uh, uh, ad adaptive to the situation. And there was this philosopher who, who said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm quoting uh, philosophers because I don't want Professor Duce to say, you know, you didn't uh, quote them. I don't want him to. <laughs> uh, there was this Spanish, uh, uh, what was his name? Let me find his name, please. He was called Ortega y Gasset. He, he had uh, uh, different books, uh, but there was one on education where he said, mobilizing ideas is what excites people. So if we want to excite our uh, citizens, we need to come up with ideas. It's not about finance. I had uh, some of uh, the participants saying we need money and this and that and you know, it's not about money. We need to have ideas that excite our people, make them uh, actively participate. And, and finally, sorry, I, uh, I took longer than necessary. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you again in Lomé. I thank you. We thanks chairperson of this forum for his hard work. Nous remercions le président du forum. Ce n'était pas chose aisée que de résumer ces trois jours de travaux. Merci pour tout cela. Nous allons poursuivre. Vous me permettrez une petite digression. Quand nous, Africains, sommes sérieux, nous savons réaliser des merveilles. Donc avant d'inviter Le prochain intervenant, je me permettrai de saluer avec lui tout fièrement la victoire des Springboks face aux 15 de la Rose. Vous l'aurez compris en Coupe du monde de rugby. Juste pour vous dire que la nation arc-en-ciel, lorsqu'elle s'est profitée de ses forces, sait faire des choses merveilleuses. Donc hier, les Springboks ont eu raison du 15 de la Rose en demi-finale de la Coupe du monde de rugby après avoir eu raison de la France en quart de finale. Et nous espérons qu'ils auront raison des All Blacks en finale, même et qu'ils pourront ainsi conserver leur Coupe du Monde. Ça, c'était une petite parenthèse. Merci et félicitations à la nation arc-en-ciel. J'ai la joie de vous inviter maintenant à accueillir la lecture de la déclaration finale du forum qui sera faite par M. Alivin Botts, vice-ministre des Relations extérieures et de la coopération de la République d'Afrique du Sud. So, welcome for your final declaration and all our congratulations to the Springboks. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Um, and let me first express uh, my accolades to the gracious hosts uh, of this inaugural uh, Lome uh, Peace and Security Forum uh, for the courtesies extended to the entirety of uh, the delegation. Um, allow me at this point, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, read uh, the declaration of the first edition of the Lomé Peace and Security uh, Forum. It 
says we, the participants and stakeholders, gathered uh, on the occasion of the first edition of the Lomé Peace and Security Forum, held on the 21st and 22nd October 2023 in Lomé, in the Republic of Togo, on the theme how to strengthen political transitions towards democratic governance in Africa, guided by the principles and ideals of democracy and the relevant UN resolutions, in particular, the General Assembly resolutions A, Resolution 55 stroke 96 of the 4th of December 2000, and Resolution 627 of the 13th of December 2007, and the Human Rights Council resolutions, in particular Resolution 19 stroke 36 of the 23rd of March 2012, and Resolution 34 41 of the 24th of March 27. Considering the International Covenant on uh, Civil and Political Rights adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on 16 of December 1966 and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women adopted on 18 of December 1979, considering the United Nations Secretary General's guidance note on democracy of the 8th September 2009 and the April 2008 guidance note on strengthening the rule of law, considering the constitutive act of the African Union adopted in Lomé on the 11th of uh, July 2000, in particular its Articles 3 and 4 on the promotion of uh, democratic principles and institutions, human and uh, people's rights, good governance, popular participation and the rule of law, considering also the African Charter on democracy, elections, and governance adopted in Addis Ababa on the 30th of January 2007, the AU Charter on Human and People's Rights adopted in Nairobi on 1st June 1981, and Aspiration 3 of the 2063 Agenda adopted in Addis Ababa on 31st January 2015, the Lomé Declaration on Unconstitutional Changes of Government adopted on July 12, 2000, and the Declaration on Terrorism and Unconstitutional Changes of Government adopted on the 28th of May 2022 in Malabo, Bearing in mind the protocol on the establishment of the Peace and Security Council of the AU, the various communiques of its meetings of this Council on Transitions in Africa, in particular communique of the PSC 1152 of 2023 on the transition in chart the communique 1162 of 2023, July on the updated situation in the Sahel, and the communique, ladies and gentlemen, 1172 of 31st of August 2023 on the situation in Gabon following the regime change. Considering the final communique of the first ministerial conference of the African Political Alliance held on the 3rd of May 2023 in Lomé, particularly, ladies and gentlemen, paragraph 29 and 30, which stressed the need for African 
nations to strengthen their bonds of solidarity, their cooperative relations, and to explore indigenous ways of financing the fight against terrorism, which constitute a real danger for democracy on the continent, being concerned about the state of democracy and good governance in Africa, despite the progress made over the last three decades on the continent in improving governance and in the conduct of public affairs, concerned also, ladies and gentlemen, by the threats facing democracies both under construction and the more established, noting with concern that the disconnect between the promises of democracy and the reality of governance in Africa creates and reinforces the skepticism of the people towards democracy that must be perceived as a process, an unfinished and unperfectable project, and not as an achievement. Having recognized the need to work towards strengthening the rule of law, justice, democratic institutions, participatory and inclusive governance on the continent, including accountability, being convinced of the importance of the rule of law in the lasting pacification of social relations and in the maintenance of regular peaceful relations between nations, being aware that the fight against violent extremism and terrorism is not incompatible with democracy, human rights, and the rule of law, firmly being convinced that democracy remains the means par excellence for the ensuring of peace, human progress, and sustainable development in Africa, reaffirming that the first of human and people's rights is the right to development, bearing in mind the hazards, uncertainties, and unpredictable situations of political transitions, whilst being convinced that these could also constitute an opportunity for profound structural transformation for the country's concern and their populations. Considering the dual challenge of breaking with unconstitutional changes of government on the one hand and making political transitions opportunities for strengthening democracy, the building of state resilience, the strengthening of the rule of law on the other hand being aware of the need to pursue political transitions and adapt it to the nature of the challenges, and thus taking into account the deep and endogenous spirits of our societies in order to better adapt the instruments and tools of governance at all organizational levels, sub-regional, regional, and international being convinced that the strengthening of transitions towards uh, democratic governance depends strongly on the adherence of transitional governments to the principles and ideals of democracy, the adoption and implementation of essential and indispensable reforms, having noted the need to maintain a constructive dialogue with countries in political transitions, and to accompany them in order to support the consolidation of democracy and beyond that, the democratization movement in Africa, oriented towards the building of open societies, pluralistic, tolerant, free, and based on law and strong institutions, welcoming the relevance and timelessness of the theme of the first edition of the Lomen Peace and Security Forum, which reflects Togo's interest in the issues of strengthening democratic governance, peace, and security in Africa, and Togo's ability to think outside of the box and put on its agenda matters of continental issues that determine Africa's present and future in a changing international context. We declare, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, as follows. Political transitions must be guided by the main objectives of strengthening democratic governance, strengthening the resilience of the state, institutions, and the rule of law 
in an environment characterized by the emergence of new security challenges and the resurgence of unconstitutional changes of government where it is essential to promote African expertise in the search for solutions to African problems. We therefore invite, ladies and gentlemen, governments of countries in transitions to resolutely direct their actions and the conduct of processes towards the consolidation of democratic governance. We call for political transitions, which must serve as opportunities to effect change, bold reforms, and profound social political transformations that are more inclusive and participatory. We further call on countries in transition to work towards a constitutional framework that ensures the balance of powers and fundamental freedoms, respect for human rights, and the promotion of a more equitable society and the well-being of citizens. We invite us to go beyond the pure, pure, the pure formal approaches of political transitions to make them more real opportunities for rebuilding and consolidating of democratic gains by taking into account local specialities. Ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude the declaration, we further wish to emphasize, ladies and gentlemen, that we welcome the creation of the Loman Peace and Security Forum, which aims to be a permanent platform for dialogue, mediation, facilitation, negotiations, peace and security in Africa. We therefore call for the immediate ceasefire in Sudan, an end to the activities of armed groups in the east of the DRC, dialogue amongst uh, Libyans for the rapid organization of elections and support for the fight against terrorism in the Sahel, Somalia, and northern Mozambique. And we urge armed groups in the north of the Republic of Mali, the Central African Republic and Chad to join or reintegrate into peace processes in these three countries. We wish to underscore the need for sub-regional regional and international organizations to further strengthen their commitment to preventative diplomacy in order to prevent uh, conflicts and crises and to facilitate peace talks, support the peaceful and diplomatic resolutions of disputes on the continent. We encourage the African elites to develop solutions adapted to the specific needs of Africa we remain confident that the current renewed interest in pan-Africanism in Africa and amongst the African diaspora and the effectiveness of the ACFDA will enable Africa to improve its representativity in global governance and its share in global trade. And we welcome the launch by Togo on the 3rd of May 2003, 2023 of the African Political Alliance whose first edition of the Lomé Peace and Security Forum is its flagship activity and the projected plan to organize the 9th Pan-African Congress that will take place in Lomé in 2024, co-organized by Togo and the AU on the team, renewal of Pan-Africanism and the role of Africa in the reform of multilateral institutions mobilizing resources and reinventing oneself to act. Ladies and gentlemen, we add our voice to that of Togo to thank all the actors and partners who supported in various ways the organization of the first edition of the Lomé Peace and Security Forum done in Lomé 2022 of October 2023. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, and Kosi Kakulu. Thank you, Mr. Vice Minister from South Africa. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'histoire retiendra que notre cher pays, le Togo, sous le leadership de son président, Forest Sozina Nyasingbe, a pensé 
et mise en œuvre les 20, 21 et 22 octobre 2023, l'OME Peace and Security Forum, pour une paix durable et la stabilité des pays dans la sous-région ouest-africaine dans un contexte de tension. Et cette vision du chef de l'État togolais, lui, il a su la traduire en une action en nous conviant toutes et tous ici. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez accueillir sous des ovations bien nourries son Excellence, professeur Robert Doucet, ministre des Affaires étrangères, de l'intégration régionale et des Togolais de l'extérieur pour son discours de clôture. Je savais que vous allez faire ce que vous aviez fait, c'est pourquoi je vous ai devancé pour éviter l'applaudissement et l'ovation. Merci, euh, Madame la Maître de Cérémonie. Euh, je voudrais, je sais que vous êtes fatigué. Vous suivez mon regard. Vous êtes fatigué. Nous sommes fatigués. Tout le monde est fatigué. On s'est très bien compris. Monsieur le ministre d'État, monsieur le, monsieur les ministres, mesdames et euh, messieurs les premiers ministres, les anciens premiers ministres, mesdames et messieurs les ministres, chers collègues, chers participants, mesdames et messieurs les ambassadeurs, par euh, votre contribution euh, pendant ces deux jours et demi, nous croyons que le thème de notre euh, forum qui se réfère aux voies et moyens de rendre les transitions politiques à même d'asseoir les bases d'une gouvernance efficiente, a réellement trouvé sa, sa raison d'être. En effet, plutôt que de jeter la probe sur les acteurs de ces transitions, nous pensons que la sagesse africaine nous condamne à avoir un rapport fraternel envers les pays et les peuples en détresse et en quête d'une issue salvatrice. Nous y croyons parce que nous disons que, à la vérité, la diplomatie nous en donne les clés et les moyens, tandis que les instruments juridiques des organisations régionales et sous-régionales nous offrent le cadre institutionnel. C'est pourquoi je voudrais ici, au nom du président de la République togolaise, le président fort Issa Zimdania Zimbe, vous remercier pour avoir fait le déplacement de l'OME et avoir contribué très fortement à, à mettre en place, à bâtir ensemble cette première édition de l'OME Peace and Security Forum. Je voudrais vous rassurer que la détermination du gouvernement togolais est celle de continuer à travailler pour la paix sur le continent et la paix dans notre région. Nous ne pouvons pas, comme vous le saviez, devant des différentes difficultés, euh, être sourds. C'est de notre devoir. Parce que si nous, nous, si nous ne le faisons pas au Togo, quelqu'un d'autre peut le faire. Et ce qui se passe aujourd'hui dans certains pays nous est déjà arrivé dans le passé et ça peut nous arriver aussi. Donc c'est pourquoi, en toute humilité, nous pensons qu'à chaque fois qu'il y a des difficultés, nous devons aider pour résoudre ces difficultés. Ladies and gentlemen, before closing my remarks, allow me to express also my, my special thanks to the head of state, the President Fonya Simbi, for his discernment, his uh, leadership, uh, and, in, and also in discretion, in uh, a diplomatic uh, action, which, uh, as you know, give us, uh, uh, give us hope, uh, 
a better political future for our region, for our country, also our region and our continent. I would also uh, like to extend my gratitude uh, to the chairman of uh, LPSF, the Lome Peace and Security Forum, our friend Dr. Abisaid. I would like also extend my thanks to everyone, his team, you as participant and, and uh, at our forum here in, uh, in uh, Lome, the capital for peace, dialogue, tolerance, and what? What? Mediation. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, uh, we, we are closing our session. I would like to, uh, to reassure you. So, we are still available in uh, Togo to work for peace. Because peace for us is not only to help our friends or our sisters, our brothers in the region. Peace is our own conviction. We, are, we, we have the conviction for peace because we know without peace, we cannot transform our society. We cannot transform our life. So we say to work for peace, to make peace between us is a first priority for the people of Togo, for you also, and for everyone here. I know you are tired, you are tired, and you are tired. Thank you. On a compris que Monsieur le Ministre persiste et signe. Ça lui ressemble bien. Merci donc à vous toutes et à, et à vous tous. Rome ne s'est pas construite en un jour. L'Afrique non plus ne peut pas se construire en un jour. Il nous faut du temps, comme disait hier le professeur Kanté, comme l'ont dit certains, tous les intervenants qui ont montré beaucoup de pragmatisme, beaucoup de réalisme. Nous vous souhaitons donc le meilleur. La déclaration finale peut être téléchargée sur le site de LPSF. Euh, merci à vous tous et à vous toutes. Lomé, capitale de la paix, de la médiation, du dialogue et de la tolérance, est heureux de vous avoir accueilli et vous souhaite le meilleur. Nous pourrons bâtir l'Afrique en y mettant tous un peu de bonne volonté. Nous vous souhaitons le meilleur et que Dieu nous fasse la faveur de rentrer chez vous en toute sécurité. We wish you, all of you, to go back home safe. Thank you so much.